Hey, what's happening today, everybody? About a year ago, I did an iRacing uh, GIMP painting tutorial using the NASCAR A-Car um, as my, as my uh, canvas. Uh, it's been about a year. That video has actually, in my terms, got a lot of views, uh, coming up on a thousand views right now. And I know in YouTube land, that's not a ton, but for Ben Laughter land, that's a lot. Um, and I, I figured, you know, GIMP has, has had some updates since then. Um, and uh, since that seemed to be profitable for a lot of folks to watch that, um, I had the need right now to paint another car, and I thought I'd uh, take a minute to do that. Um, it's also worth pointing out, you know, if you watched my last tutorial and you're interested in, you know, doing more stuff, you know, you learn by doing. I've not been trained in any of this stuff, so some of you are probably way advanced than I am and will always be. Uh, some of you do this professionally. I just do this as a hobby, as kind of the, uh, the, my, the main organizer for my team, Mind Trick Motorsports. I'm going to page through some of my recent, uh, my more recent paints here um, that, uh, uh, that I'm pretty proud of. Um, so I've grown uh, in my creativity and in my ability over the last year. Um, these are the cars here that we're going to be running in the Daytona 24. Uh, here is um, some more examples of some, what I feel like are some pretty cool paints that have come out. You'll notice this running theme of that red textured, um, this red textured effect that's going on here. That um, That's something that I've started implementing throughout my cars uh, quite a lot. So um, today, uh, th some of those cars were the ones we're going to be running in the uh, Daytona 24. But I've decided kind of last minute here that I want to run the Roar before the 24 in the Mustang. And since the Mustang paint was one of the very first paints I did a long time ago, it's atrociously bad. And so I want to kind of take you through start to finish my entire process, and we're gonna paint the Mustang. I don't have a very clear idea of what I want in mind, but I know my elements, right? Black, white, and my red pattern. Um, I know that the Mustang, being an American muscle car, uh, will probably look good with stripes, and sort of a minimalist design is most likely what I'll go with. So. Shouldn't be a hard one to paint, but I want to take you through beginning to end how I go about it so that uh, folks who are considering doing their own paints will be able to see that. Uh, let's go ahead and drop down here into Chrome. You'll open up the iRacing website and set up a test session, right? You should all know how to do that already. Set up a test session at the centripetal circuit for the car you want to paint. But before you begin the session, check a couple of things. Um, number one, ensure that your weather is set to clear, right? With iRacing's new dynamic cloud movements, you don't want clouds coming over and distorting your colors and whatnot. So, so you want afternoon uh, and clear uh, as your as your weather settings. That way, you've got a constant weather uh, coloring. Then, open up the paint. I'm going to do this in a new tab here. Open up the paint uh, section of iRacing and download the car template won't take long and it comes down as a zip file all right so it comes down as a, uh, a PSD in a zip file so what you want to do is extract it and this is where I'm going to start making recommendations um, I have in my e drive here a folder called paints right and then for every car that I've done a paint for you'll notice that I have a folder so I already happen to have one for the FR500S, nothing in it. So uh, this was from a long time ago. Uh, so I probably lost those files. You know, it's been four years since I painted this car. So I'm just gonna drop it into this folder. That way later on, I've already got the template. I don't need to go hunt, uh, hunt it down again. I don't have to go find it. It's just already there. Oh look, it's a, I do still have a file there. But we're gonna use the fresh one anyway. Who knows, maybe I racing made a change to it. So now what we're gonna do is open up GIMP. And if you haven't downloaded, the version that I'm running on is 2.10.4. I think that's the most current. It may or may not be. Um, I like it. Um, I think that uh, I wish it had a little more color in the UI for these different tools so that you could more quickly identify what you want in a pinch. But um, I like the new darker UI. It's easier to work in. Um, I think a little more modern and nicer. And generally, it runs really well, uh, with the exception of exporting. You start getting a big, complicated file, 
and when you export it takes a long time so what you're going to do now is take the raw P uh, PSD file the Photoshop file that iRacing provides and simply drag that in and that's gonna open it and ask you if you want to convert to a GIMP file we do so I convert and now you can see we've just got the raw template you can zoom if you don't know how to do this you can zoom I'm gonna hold down the control button here and zoom in zoom out using the scroll wheel if I move my cursor up here zoom in zoom out zoom in zoom out so you'll see me zooming in and out of the car um, a lot throughout this tutorial and uh, that's just me using the control on my excuse me the control button on my keyboard and uh, the the scroll wheel on my mouse common question that I got with my last one a couple of more key things to note um, iRacing provides you with a lot of a lot of stuff out of the box um, so the first thing I like to do is open the paintable area and look at the car patterns because the first thing I want to do is ignore them right I don't want my car to look like anyone else's and a lot of folks start with these patterns um, and that's fine if you do you know go for it but I, I don't want to be locked in a box that's defined by one of these pre-provided patterns so the first thing I do is simply delete this entire group right that way I'm not tainted by any of that stuff um, the next thing I do is in the paintable area I'm going to create two groups one group for graphics so those are things like uh, you know shapes swoops spikes um, whatever and then another one for logos it's important that the logos one is above the graphics one chances are you're gonna do a layer of graphics and then above that layer you're gonna apply um, uh, you're going to apply your logos and in fact you can see that that's already what iRacing has done we're just following their model okay so you'll see here that you know they, they have layers and they're they're in a in a stacked ranking what I mean by that is we'll use this as an example you can see here that the iRacing logo that we're not ever gonna have on the car in this manner but this iRacing logo the the wire is not visible over it if I drag this layer above that layer now the wire is visible right so if you've never worked with layers before the idea is like sheets of paper on a desk if you have one sheet sitting on top sitting on top of another sheet then uh, you can't see the one below right it, it's covered so layers you're, you're gonna pay a lot of attention to how you think how you have things lined up and how you have things grouped uh, grouping is also important naming your layers and your groups are amazingly important because they'll save you a lot of time later on so let's start painting to do that I'm gonna go ahead and open up this test session and show you how we can quickly preview uh, your your car without having to go back and forth back and forth back and forth so let's go ahead and start the start the test session now once the session loads what you want to do is open up your camera tools it should be F12 on your keyboard I've got it mapped to something else but it should be F12 on your keyboard um, and then go ahead and just open the car up get into a test now you'll notice that I'm not in full screen right that's kind of important you're gonna to want to be able to toggle back and forth between windows and um, and the simulation itself right so I'm gonna let this run for a minute and while I am I'm going, to I'm going to tab back over to GIMP and we're going to make it to where this blue wireframe is going to appear on the car. Now to do that, let me explain to you real quickly how, um, how iRacing references, downloads and references the paints, right? Be they from iRacing Direct, meaning someone does not have a trading paints um, file going, so it's just going to use the basic iRacing default or if they have trading paints going both types of files both both uh, sources will come to the same destination and on your own computer if you go to documents iRacing paint you'll notice that there's a folder for every helmet every suit in fact I'm going to delete a lot of this it takes up a bunch of space unnecessarily uh, but every helmet every suit um, and um, and every car that you have driven or raced against. Sometimes this is a good way to clean up clutter on your computer, by the way, if you 
don't really run NASCAR these days, then do you really need to have all of these stock car uh, paints in there? No, you don't. And so you can delete those, and then those folders will recreate themselves if you join a session that's driving that particular car. Like for example, I've got this FR500S folder here that didn't exist two days ago. Um, you'll notice that everything on here is yesterday's date. I'm doing this on the 6th of January, 2019. And everything in, everything in here was created yesterday, as was the folder. And that's because I joined a, a, a hosted test server and uh, ran some laps in the Mustang that I hadn't driven in a long, long time. And so it created the folder and then started downloading everyone's paints that, um, that I was running around or against. Now, one of these paints is mine, but how do I find out which one, right? Because the car as it exists here, I'll go ahead and since that's been running for a minute, go ahead and exit. This car is, this is one of my old paints, one of my very first paints, and it's terrible and it's awful and it's bad and I hate it, but uh, you know, it's my first, one of my very first attempts and, and you know, it's there. So at any rate, um, I don't want this to be showing here, right? I want to replace this with whatever I'm working on in GIMP. So what I need to do is replace the file here with what I'm creating here. And here's how you do that. You're going to export it to that folder. So again, documents, iRacing, paint, find the appropriate cars folder, and then replace the one that has your number on it. Now I'm going to pause there real quickly and we're going to answer the next question. Well, how do I know my number? What's my number? Everyone in iRacing, yes, your name appears on the relative, but everyone has sort of a member ID, a customer ID. And if you open up the forums and go to your profile, I'll show you how to get to it real quickly. If you open up the forums and go to your profile and then hover over your helmet or anyone else's helmet for that matter, you'll notice down in the bottom left where it says JavaScript view member info 147818. If I go hover over anyone else's helmet out there in the profiles, uh, out there in, in the forums that's, that I'm chatting with or whatever, then that number will be different for every person. That's your, your unique iRacing ID. And so if my number is 147818, then that means that car underscore 147818 is how iRacing knows to put a particular paint on a particular car for everyone who can see it, right? So I'm going to export to overwrite that paint. And I'm going to export it as a TGA file. That's super important. That's the type, that's the file format that iRacing uses. So I'm going to hit export. It's going to ask me if I want to replace it. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to hit export. Now, when I go back to iRacing, all I need to do now is hit control R to replace this. <clears throat> However, I'm going to hit control R right now and it's not going to work. It's just going to sit there and stay white and it will stay white forever, right? Um, now the reason it's doing that is because you'll notice that the driver is not in the car, right? Without someone in the car, and you might have seen this before where there's a car sitting on pit road that's just solid white, um, you know, just sitting there and you're like, man, why is it still solid white? Well, I'll show you a trick. When you're doing this work, when you're, when you're doing your own paints, pause it with someone in the car because once the driver is present, it starts, um, it starts looking for a paint. So I'm just backing up here because I was in the car just a minute ago. There he is. Okay, so I paused it now with the driver in the car, and you can see now that I've got my wireframe uh, on the blue background that we're working on over here, right? If I throw a big splotch of white on the hood here, right? Let's just do a big brush. It's a big block of white there. And then I export that, Control E to do a quick export, you'll notice you can export as, meaning you need to find a new destination, or export to where you already have it. You're just reinforcing the export, replacing the file again. Um, over here, I'm going to hit Control R again, and now I've got a Mustang with a white blob on the front. Cool? Cool. So, now we're set up in a place where we can start actually working on the car. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. We can start working on the car. The primary tools we're going to be using to do that are our Control Zoom. Um, probably some lettering. Uh, we're probably going to use the uh, color picker or, or the select by color tool here and there. We're going to do the paths tool a lot for uh, you know shape choosing, the bucket tool, 
and the paintbrush tool. Those are probably the most commonly used ones. Oh, and the eraser too. Um, the eraser isn't only for fixing mistakes. It can also be for making shapes, right? You make a larger shape and then you carve out the stuff you don't want. Now, if we go back to my, um, my current cars and try to glean a little inspiration from them, some of the more recent paint jobs that I've done. Again, I really like the red pattern and I really like the combination of white, red, and black. Um, and I don't necessarily care a ton which one is the dominant color on the car. I just like the mixture a lot. Um, I, like that. I think that's really sharp right there. I'm biased, but I think those are both really sharp cars. So what I think we're gonna do is just start by making the car solid black. And then I think I'm gonna do my accent colors in the, uh, in the red color along with, um, uh, in the red color along with um, white pinstripe. So to do that, we're gonna be working first in the graphics folder. The logos folder is gonna be empty for some time. But you wanna start with your, with your dominant color first, which in this case is gonna be uh, black, I think. So, so now with the main car body, you'll notice down here in the bottom right, the main car body layer selected. I am going to go choose black as my color of choice. I'm gonna grab the bucket tool and then we're gonna make a big decision to just say the car is black, right? So now if I hit Control E to export, Control R to reload, you can see now I've got a black car with white uh, guidelines, white wireframing happening. And you'll turn the wireframes off and on. Um, I definitely recommend looking at your car with wireframes off as much as possible because they can, uh, the wireframes can conceal imperfections and, and make you change your mind on different things. So now what I think I'm probably gonna do is follow this body line across and up with red and then have a primarily red back of car, primarily black front of car, and have a white pinstripe to offset between the red pattern and the black. So to do that, we're gonna use our paths tool. And we're gonna go, um, actually before we use our paths tool, let's grab our red background, which is gonna take us into another, um, another organizational tip. In that closet, in that paint folder, you'll notice I've got a folder here that's not named after a car, right? I've got an assets folder. Now what that is, is you know I found a good Audi logo and I just want to reuse it, so I saved it. I've got a good Betamax logo. I've got a good Circuit City logo. I've got Commodore 64 logos. I've got, you know, um, the Bathurst 12 hour, Nurburgring, you know, WEC. You know, you go out online, you find a logo you like that you want to put on a car, and instead of having to go find it over and over and over, just have a folder for it. That way you can always reference it later on. Um, and so in this case, I have a folder for uh, patterns and shapes that I have used from time to time on cars. And so all I'm gonna do is grab my little um, uh, example here, drag it out and put it in there. And you'll notice that just created, I'm gonna delete that layer, I don't need it. It just created a new layer with this little guy in it. Now I'm gonna rotate this and I And you'll notice how because it's not a center, I mean, its proportions are a little funky. I'm actually going to manually change it to about there. Rotate. And it does not have to be perfect because the edges will be, um, the edges will be concealed by the white pinstriping I'm going to do. So, it's going to roughly place this. And I know that it's overlapping. If I look at this, it's overlapping here. That's going to cause problems. So first, broad strokes. Second, cleanup work, right? And so what I'm going to do now is take this and copy it. Duplicate the layer. And then I'm going to hold down Control on my keyboard. I'm sorry, uh, Shift on my keyboard. No mistake. And do it again until it matches up. And then I'm going to duplicate that one and go some more until it touches the back of the car. But now that I'm getting closer to the back where I want to swoop up anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start going up with it. And that's going to automatically create some variety anyway. Um, I'm using the same shape over and over here. 
and by by using it in different places and maybe even we'll, we'll swap this one around I can rotate the shape so that the pattern is reversed and now the darker is up front and we've got that nice big white uh, lighter triangle at the back here right we've got this uh, nice randomized pattern happening over here and so now I'm going to export that and reload it here and I don't see anything well I don't see anything because it's on this side of the car so the idea here is now that now I'm starting to get some work done is I've got an idea of what the basic shape the basic difference is going to be now what I want to do is bring a white pinstripe to follow this body line and then swoop back and terminate at the tail of the car um, so the top is still going to be black I'm gonna put some racing stripes up top using the same pattern but the top's going to be black um, and the majority of the side is going to be black and I'm probably gonna have a mind trick logo there I would think um, we'll see how that looks in a minute but first let's let's focus on this white pinstripe and so here this is where our paths tool comes into play the paths tool is great it's a little finicky but it's great it, it allows you to create um, really complex shapes instead of having to go create a whole bunch of them individually you can just do one um, and I'm just gonna do rough lines here because I'm gonna show you some curvature tricks zoom in for accuracy follow the line around now here's where I'm gonna have a curve so kind of eyeball the arc of the curve and then follow this line all the way out okay now just keeping things outside see I notice that patch there I've got to patch that up with some red in a minute uh, did I do that backwards I did that backwards okay so control Z becomes our friend here All right, instead of going down and around, I don't want to cover up the red, right? I want to cover up the black above it with a white pinstripe. And again, just rough, rough, rough here. Rough's all you need. Okay, so now before I finish this off, before I connect these two pieces, you know, note back here that I didn't follow the body line, right? The body line curves, but I've got this straight 40-ish degree angle, and that's not what we want. So the way you make a curve in the paths tool is by just grabbing this and pulling it around. Okay, I'm just clicking and holding on my mouse. And then I'm just gonna drop it here and use these two levers to control the aggressiveness of the um, of the curve until I'm closely matching the body line that I'm trying to follow. There we go. That's good. And then same thing up here, um, except I'm not following a body line, uh, except for that little pinch right there. I'm not really following a body line, but I am wanting to create a natural looking curve. So I'm just grabbing it. And I don't want that to be over 90 degrees, so there we go. And that looks pretty good. Yeah. So now, with those two curves handled, I'm going to go back over here to where I left off. I'm going to click the second, the, the last one that I did, and I'm going to use Shift V. Shift V completes it and makes a selection out of that. And now I'm going to keep that selection in place um, after I do my white uh, pinstripe here. And you'll see why in a moment. So I go to my brush tool. Boom, boom. I'm going to create a new layer, which is super important. Uh, it's on the right side of the car. So I'm going to say right white pinstripe rough. Okay. And then I'm just going to reduce my brush size, even though it doesn't really matter. I've got a selection here, so 
it's only going to uh, work in the selection anyway, so it's not a big deal. But why work with a big brush when you can be more precise? Making sure that I get full coverage within the selection area there. Because the more you sort of overspray, the more uh, flexibility you give yourself later for moving things around and refining. So I'm just going back over it again. Cool. Now, I'm gonna turn off the wire. We're gonna do a little cleanup work here. Export it again. Go back over here and look at it. All right. So you can start to see the basic theme coming together. You see the you see the curvature going up over the wheel, uh, the rear wheel, and then and then back. Uh, that might be a little too much red for me back there. I'm looking at it, but we'll find out once we get the black in and we start moving things around. So, what I'm going to do now is well, first off, I'm going to I'm going to make another subgroup under. I'm going to call this subgroup the right side. And I'm going to start putting the work that I'm doing right now into that. Um, yep. Boom, boom. Uh, what we really need to do first then is go ahead. So while we've got the selection open, what we're going to do is go ahead and change, um, do our black patch here. So on the right side, I'm going to create a, yet another um, right black patch over pinstripe. Def descriptive names, guys. Descriptive names are good. Now, I'm going to change this back to black, the same color as my background here. And I am simply, on this layer, going to cover over the white work that I just did with the exact same shape. So, same exact shape here. Which allows me to now move and resize my pinstripe. So I'm just using the arrow keys with the black layer, that black cover layer selected. And that's allowing me to make a white pinstripe and move things around to where it resizes, right? So I don't have to draw a hyper accurate pinstripe. That's hard. What I just did was a lot easier and I think looks pretty good. Yeah. I'm actually really happy with that. And I think some logos over here, this this area in the back feels kind of, um, I don't know, naked, uh, like it needs some needs something to happen back there. Uh, so I might end up blacking out this part of the bumper or I might use some logo action back here to try to try to liven it up a little because it definitely looks looks blank back there. Let's put our first logo in just to sort of start taste testing how it's gonna look with that sort of stuff on there. And so before I start doing that stuff, I'm just going to hit control S to save. And I'm going to go into that folder where I've been keeping, where I've been working out of uh, Ford Mustang FRS. And I'm going to save it as an XCF image. Now that's the raw GIMP file. Um, TGA is what uh, iRacing reads. XCF is what GIMP reads. I did not, that's, there's a difference between saving and um, exporting. So I export to TGA so that iRacing can read it. I save to XCF so that if I had a computer crash or something right now, I don't lose my work. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. All right, let's grab a Mind Trick logo now um, after we merge all of these reds together. So what I'm gonna do is take all these red up to the right, so that's the name of that pattern, and merge down. Merge down merge down right so now I've got one layer for all that red action and I'm gonna just call it red pattern right okay there we go I like to have the word right first um, so that later I'm not confused by that okay so on the right side now we've got our red pattern and then above that we've got our white pinstripe and then above that, we've got our black working in layers. Notice how if I remove that layer, 
the ugly version of the pinstripe reasserts itself. So we've got some basic design elements in place. Let's now cover up the overspray work done here and here. So I won't use the eraser here to delete this stuff because if I want to shift the pattern around a little bit, I'd rather not be shifting a gap, right? So I'm just going to create a new one now um, and we'll call it right black patch over red pattern. And then I'm going to use this tool, the airbrush tool, I'm sorry, the paintbrush tool. And I'm just going to paint, paint, semi-detailed here. You've usually got some flexibility with the wire, right? You can see that the part ends well before that part of the mask ends. Um, and so you don't have to be hyper accurate with it, but it never hurts. Accuracy never hurt nobody. Cool. Let's save our work so far. Now, I, this will be the third time I've said it. Let's go grab a Mind Trick logo. So I have been like I said, keeping all kinds of uh, folders here for all the various things, including an entire history of all the different versions of Mind Trick logos. I've got one for dark backgrounds that's white and one for white backgrounds that's dark. And so, of course, here we're going to use this one. And we're going to drag it up into the logos box. And just like with the graphics, we're going to create a group within the logos group called Right. And we're going to drop that in, call it naming things is important. It makes it a lot easier later, later on. So now I'm going to just, oh, I didn't show you the tool. Um, the scale tool here is what allows you to change the size of a thing without losing its quality. And that primarily works going down in size, not up. So try to find on Google the largest image you can and then scale it down in GIMP as opposed to finding a small image and scaling it up. When you scale it up, you lose quality. When you scale it down, you retain quality. Uh, you'll notice this checkbox here. It's on by default for me. Um, I think that's natural for everybody, but you keep the aspect ratio, which means the proportions of the shape, the size of the M stays constant as you bring it down in size. So I'm gonna bring it down there and then there. We're gonna rough place it, hit enter turn off my wire and just kind of get a feel for how it looks on the car. Export. Hmm. Don't think I'm loving it. I think the thing that's wrong, I think the thing that's wrong is the aggressiveness of this trip up following that that body line, I think, may have been a mistake. Or, all right, random idea time. Let's try this. Sometimes this is all about just trial and error and goofing off with stuff until you find happen across something you like. If I move the red area down, Actually, by that, what I mean is if I increase the size of the white area up here, I wonder if the Mind Trick logo would look good up here. Well, let's experiment. White, white experiment. So what I'm going to do is create... All right, so we'll see what this looks like. Obviously, I'm gonna to need to do some cleanup at that turn there. Let's let's go look at the rough sketch up. 
No. Hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. But no worries. Failure is okay. So I just delete the layer and I'm back to where I was. I'm having a little trouble figuring out what it is I really don't like about this. I'm just going to run with it for a while and see how we feel about it later. Maybe after the stripes and whatnot go on, I'll like it more. Okay, so now I'm going to match. When I'm with my Mind Trick logo here, I'm going to match the angle. Maybe once I have some associate sponsor stuff happening back in the back, I'll, I'll like the whole situation more. We'll find out. We'll find out. Right now, I'm not loving it. Okay, so now let's move our attention up to the front of the car and start thinking about those stripes. I think I'm going to like the black fender for now. Um, and again, this is supposed to be a pretty similar, pretty simple paint job. Um, but I think I'm liking the black fender right now. So now it's just a matter of creating some racing stripes using those patterns. So what I'm going to do is simply, well, this should work. Well, no. Okay. What I'm going to do is go grab a fresh one. Um, cause I merged all that together. So it's going to be a little funky. And we will rotate that again boom 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 around about there and we're just going to drop that up in the center of the car now iRacing has helpfully provided a guideline here um, of the center of this particular car that identifies it um, if you don't know how to make a guideline of your own you just go up to the top bar where the measurements are and drag down or drag out from the side so now they've given me a nice guide rule here that I'm going to use to mark the center. And let's go eyeball real quickly how wide that is on the actual car. So probably a little too wide. But what I'm going to first do is carry that all the way back across the car. Um, and for keeping it consistent, I should be able to just duplicate and move this around in the same way that I was the other time. So we're going to create a new group for graphics over here called racing stripes drop that up in there and then we're going to start duplicating two or three times here Okay, so now for racing stripes, what I'm first going to do is simply cover up the red that I've already done. So I'm going to create a new layer, racing stripe, uh, black cover. And this is going to handle any overspray um, that I have. So I'm just going to put myself on black here, make a bigger cover, and I'm going to create some boundaries for myself. Now I'm covering up the red that I've done. And then I'm going to use an erase tool to uncover the parts that I want. Now, to do that, uh, I don't like my method.
Okay. So the way I'm going to do this is if that's 240, then half of that's 120, right? I'm looking at the, the size of this. Then half of that's 120, right? So I'm going to go 120. Move my selection down seven. That ought to be good. And now I'm going to erase my um, my layer there. All right. Now, since I started seven below, I'm going to move the selection here. So with my selection, even with the center line, seven up, so that way it's even, and then the eraser tool. Oops. Move the guide on accident. All right, let's go look at that. Mm, okay. I think that actually looks pretty good. I'm not unhappy with that. Nice and centered, nice and textured. Now I'm going to carry that down over the hood onto the bumper. So I need to go locate the front bumper, which that's all rear end. I guess that's it there. It's one of the great ways to figure out what's what <laughs> is simply by dropping uh, colors places all right so I'm just gonna go in here create a new layer and with some white I'm gonna drop let me go back and look BF good wrench okay so that's our bumper the lower part of our bumper and that should be the upper part of our bumper but the way we can prove that to ourselves is by simply coloring down it all right just a random blotch of color export that refresh and sure enough you can see what we got so what we're going to do now is remove this little guy. And I'm just going to take this whole racing stripes deal and copy it. So we're going to duplicate and then we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Now we're talking. Okay, so it wasn't wrong on size, it was just off center. Yeah. Okay. That looks pretty cool. And I think what I'm gonna do is some the Mind Trick logos are gonna go vertically here instead of across the hood. I think they'll go vertically. So now let's remove overspray, as always. Um, what I think we'll do there this time, because it's so dramatic, we'll actually use the eraser tool this time. Um, This one, boom, boom, boom. And I don't know what that is yet, but we know we don't need it here. Right, let's merge down real fast so we don't have to worry about which one we're on. that black break there that's because I still have the black um, the black uh, racing stripe uh, cover going on there so I've got to just real quickly remove that from anywhere that it's affecting the rest of the paint Got it. 
see any weird blackness later on, it's probably what it is. I don't know what this part is. Um, let's see if that's miscolored somewhere. Got some red action on the wing. Where is that? Oh, there it is. racing uh, logo is. If that area is paintable, then I'm going to do my red pattern in there. Uh, or maybe not, actually. I think I'll follow the red pattern across the bumper, and that might be enough red pattern back there. Okay, so now with the racing stripe in place, let's start thinking about the wing. And I've been doing sort of a thing lately where I've been having a white wing, and I think it's been looking pretty darn good so I'm gonna do that again I think and we'll see how it looks um, just create a wing layer and I'm gonna use my rectangle select tool to grab this whole area which should be the wing it's long and it's white hehe <laughs> we'll just color that bad boy in export notice how the exports are starting to take a minute um, it's one of the things about GIMP I guess it's just not really optimized for for exporting to TGA file um, it's it always seems to take a little bit longer and longer every time okay I think I like the white wing so while we're there we may as well throw a logo on it which is of course gonna be another mind trick logo but in this case the dark one for the lighter background and sometimes these can be tricky. Um, this particular car should be really easy because it's um, uh, just a simple straight wing. But I mean, if you go painting some of the LMP cars, um, it's it's really problematic because the wings will often be broken up into three or four sections uh, that you've got to then chop your logo up and move it around in such a way that makes it work. And it's it, it can be a real pain. So first, we'll just check orientation here see where we're at all right so number one looks like top to bottom I'm well centered um, uh, but left to right obviously I'm way off so what we'll do is figure out what the wires telling us and I need to turn off that layer real fast so I can see and I'll just pop this bad boy up there looking at the yellow surround of the um, use a guide when you click and drag an image you're given that little crosshairs I'll zoom in so you can see it um, you're given a crosshairs that shows you the center of the image and so okay but we're still backwards the wing wants to be red from the front. So, I need to move this up to my logos area. <coughs> so I'm gonna use my rotation tool. Rotate it 180 degrees. Go take another look. Now we need to put it on the bottom, but that's not as easy because with my logo at least, you'll notice how Mind Trick is bottom justified, right? The the I N D T R I C K, none of those are as tall as the M. Now, for that to be legible on the bottom, you need to anchor. It needs to be top justified, and I've never gotten around to creating a logo that's top justified. So every time I sort of hack one together. So what I'm going to do is again turn off the wing layer itself. And I'm going to actually know what I want. I'll leave that on. If 
but I'm going to duplicate since I know the size is correct for the wing. I just need to change its orientation. Oop, I did the wrong one. That's the door. All right, so we'll duplicate the mind trick wing. Put it up here in our new working place. And what I'll want to do, well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I need to illustrate the problem first. So let's illustrate the problem. If I put this on the car as it is, it's not going to be centered or anything. But you can see how I did, it wasn't, it didn't need to be turned around. How about that? Okay. So if I put that on the car, You'll notice how I can see the M relatively clearly if I'm following along here. Imagine yourself following this dude into the bus stop on Daytona. Um, I can see the M pretty well, but I can't really see the other letters. So I need the I and all the other letters to be as high as the M. So what I'm going to do is basically create another version of this where I'm going to erase everything that isn't the M from one of them and then everything that is the M from the other, right? So, so what we'll do is on the bottom one, I'll erase this, 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 this. Okay, so you can see how on this one, I've just got an M now. I deleted all of the black letters. So if I go back to this one now, where I've got the full logo, all I wanna do here is delete the M. Boom, right? What that allows me to do is then move the black letters independently of the red one, right? So if I grab myself a guide here and put it across the top of the M and then get that to where I like it. Now, if I turn off the wing layer for centering purposes, grab myself a guide, put it over the center. And then I'm gonna merge these two layers together so that now that they're one, I can grab this little dude, center it up on the center of the wing, turn the wing layer back on, and now I'm gonna turn off the wire. And when I get back out to the sim, I should be able to read it. See that? So that's one way you can sort of hack two images together to make them work in a situation that they, they wouldn't naturally work in. Okay, so I've got logos on the rear, or at least on the on the wing. Plenty of room down here to advertise stuff. Nothing yet on the left. Ooh, I notice a little more cleanup there. I got to do down at the door sill. I think. Um, speaking of door sills, I think that would benefit from some white. Let's see what it looks like. First off, where's that issue happening at? Where are the door sills? Bet you that's the door sill. Yeah. Yeah, that would have to be, which means there's another one like that. There it is. Okay. So let's do... In our graphics section, I'm going to go back to the right side. We're done with stripes for now, so I'm going to collapse those groups. And on the right side, I'm going to create a new layer called door sill. And we're going to do white. And I'm going to do another one of those little boxes so I don't have to clean stuff up later. And white once again. And blah. And then, of course, you'll notice how the uh, racing stripes are there. So what I want to do now is go to my racing stripe area and I'm going to create just a white cover white patch over sill and I'm just going to do that which should have fixed that left side problem yep and give me a white door sill now let's look at see what the white door sill looks like on this guy
the other side, of course. Turn off the wire. Export. Got more cleanup work to do with the black. That's from the racing stripe, so I need to go down to the racing stripe copy and find the black and erase. Boom. Export again. I think I like that little bit of white. That's a nice bit of reinforcing uh, the lines there for red. Uh, I think that looks pretty cool. All right, let's goof off with this left side on logos because um, I'm still just not real happy with the way that's coming out. Um, and I'm wondering if I need to do something different back there. So let's let's think about the logos that I want to put back there. Kind of continues the design language of the the other logos coming down. Yeah, I think I like that. So we'll keep that, and then we'll think about other things we could put around the back. Hey, fixed it. I may have just cured my angst about this paint. Oh my god, that's so much better. Okay. Feeling this. Now I can have a line of logos above the red. The red isn't nearly as dominating as it was. I might even heighten the black pinstripe cover here. Okay, I'm not hating that. I'm not hating that at all. I go so far as to say I might even like it. So that gives me kind of a new spot to put, put, put things. Like a BRS look.
Okay, so that's just an example I'm not giving up on something because I was starting to give up on this uh, this entire paint and think, yeah, I'll reapproach it later with fresh eyes. But simply changing how much of the rear quarter panel was dominated by um, by the red has totally changed the complexion of this paint for me. Now I'm kind of digging it. Okay, the VRS logo is being cut off a little bit. So I'm gonna bring that down just a tad. What just happened to me will trip you up sometimes. Um, I've never been able to truly figure out why, under what circumstances, GIMP makes this choice, but. When you go to the move tool, there's this sub tool here that you're deciding whether you're moving your path, your selection, or the layer. And commonly you're moving the layer. Uh, sometimes you'll, you'll move a path, sometimes you'll move a, a, um, a selection, but mostly you're moving a layer. But from time to time, you'll click the move tool and it'll want to move a path. And so you'll click down here, you'll have the no uh, icon there and, and you can't move it around, right? And so you move it back to layer, and now you can move things around. And so watch for that. Um, I used to, I used to totally restart GIMP when that happened because I just didn't understand why it was happening. So that's why. If it happens to you, uh, do not despair. That's why. So what I'm doing here is just sizing down the VRS logo just a tad because I kind of like that placement, but it's. Uh, Cutting off. There we go. So, come on, VRS logo action happening. Now, I'm starting to think a Thrustmaster logo might look good to take up the front of that area right after, right before the VRS logo. So, I can't put the Mind Trick logo here. So I'm gonna to try to be creative and put it on the hood. And I've got two different versions of my logo. Um, so I can either maybe go vertical and do the logo we've been using vertically along each side of the hood, and that could look kind of cool. Or I can do an overlay of the block logo in fact, I think that's the way I want to go. So let's let's go look and see what that looks like. First, we'll rotate it. Bring it down in size and rough place it. Yeah, not unhappy with that. 
and otherwise I think I might have an unadorned hood. Probably just going to leave it with that. Unless this might be a good chance to get Thrustmaster back on the car. Do something about this right side mind trick logo that's underwhelming me. I think what's underwhelming is that it was too small after we moved some things around. So what I'm going to do here is experiment with it being straight and experiment with it being at an angle. And we'll start with an angle first slightly oversized. See how that looks. Absolutely not. Hate it, hate it, hate it. So we'll go back and we've got a little bit bigger an area when we move the, the red section around. I'll do is I'll put a killer. I'll put Bruce there. Killer prototyping is a one of our teammates is a uh, machinist and has a small business called Killer Prototyping where he does CNC machine work. And so we'll put his logo down here. Okay, it still feels a little hacked together, but I think I'm pretty happy with most of it. Now let's figure out the back. I could be easy and just carry the racing stripes down. Or I could be more complex and work with the bumper shape. And I kind of feel weird about the way this white is terminating into nothing there, so... I'm thinking that I need to play with the bumper shape. Or frame frame it off with white. Just go ahead and pull it all the way across here. Use a little more than I need. And boom. And what we're doing first is just seeing about alignment. So you can see that I started it, my guess was too low. And it was a total guess, so that's okay. I'm gonna move it up a bunch. I could have used the wire uh, there to educate my guests better, but I didn't. All right, went up too much.
All right, that's pretty much there. Now I'll just do red for the whole bottom section of it. So more red patterns. You can kind of see what I'm doing here, similar to what I was doing before uh, on the right hand side, but now I've chosen to put the red above the white. Instead of doing a more detailed pinstripe, I'm doing a rougher pinstripe with, I need to go one click up on both of them, with the, um, uh, the red pattern over it. I think that's going to work, so I'll just continue that. Duplicate the layer, send it off to the left, go all the way, and then we'll duplicate the layer again to go all the way down. clean up some mess. All right, when you find that you're reasonably happy with the right side of your car, and I, I think for the purposes of this race, I, I think I'm reasonably happy. I'm, I think I've done all I'm going to do with it. So now we need to get things over to the left side. And that's going to happen in two sort of tranches here. Um, number one is going to be the layers, right? That should be a simple flip, and I'll show you that. The second one's a little more complicated. That's the logos, because if you flip logos, then now they're written backwards or upside down, like, uh, you know, like ambulances on the front of an ambulance. So um, what we're going to do first is, is layers. And so I'm going to minimize anything here that I don't need. Take logos down. Um, we're not going to flip the, anything on the rear. I'll put wing and rear real fast. Um, I'm not going to flip racing stripes. The right side is what we're going to flip, right? And so what I'm going to do first is duplicate it, the whole thing. And so I've basically just duplicated all the logo, uh, not logos, excuse me, all of the graphics that we have on the right side. So I'm now going to call this left side, right? And there's a tool up here called the flip tool. And you can see here that it does horizontal or vertical flips. I'm gonna do a vertical flip and just come down here and click and boom, now everything's over here. And all I gotta do is move it up to match where I want it to be. So to do that, it's again back to the wire and doing a little bit of eyeballing. So let's find us a good anchor point. The white impacts directly where the top of the wheel arch line is, right? So if we line that up, then everything else will line up as well. So you gotta be a little bit patient with it. You're moving several layers at the same time. And so it, it'll take it a couple seconds to catch up to your uh, movements. Maybe you've got a better graphics card than me that it doesn't take that long, but uh, so, oh, it's the bottom. Okay. The top of the red. That's why I was looking different. Okay, and now if I turn off my wire and export that, and I'll go ahead and save this to test, uh, check my work here and, and make sure it's saved so I don't lose it. Back over, and if I look at the right side, all my graphics are there. Easy peasy, right? 
Notice I've got some cleanup work to do down here. There's something about flipping the right side then caused an issue down low. So I need to figure out what that is. And the easiest way to do it is to look at the offended area here, right? That area. And boom, you can see that some of it's there. So I'm just going to pull up my eraser tool. Hold on, door sill number one. I don't need to duplicate the door sills. I thought I... Okay, so that moved all of our stuff from right to left. Now what we'll do is logos. So you can kind of see the advantage of the groupings that I've been doing all along now, right? So obviously that's on the hood or the bonnet, so we don't need to move the uh, the M. The Thrustmaster, the other Thrustmaster, same thing, right? The wing, we don't need to flip it. The right side, in fact, let's real quickly while we're at it. Right side logos. Okay, so what we're going to do, again, this is tricky. We're going to duplicate, okay? But we're not going to flip. We're going to rotate everything. So we'll duplicate and we'll have to flip them individually. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay, so let's just uh, rotate. Now, I'm not going to do Bruce, and I'll show you why in a minute. Actually, I am going to do Bruce, but then I'm going to replace my work. Um, so I'll go ahead and re rotate it, and I'll show you when we get to the other side why I'm not actually going to use what I just, what I just did. But I'm going to keep it there for placement sake. And what logo is this? Michelin. So that's where um, I failed to label. Okay. Now, we will move these three together because they're on the same row. They're justified together. And I'm just using the up arrow instead of the mouse because I don't want to accidentally move it left to right at all. There we go. And now, the next thing was the mind trick or killer. Okay, so. Go ahead and and then Michelin. Almost no red showing. That's about right. Now, let me show you why the killer logo um, will not be reused in the same way. All right, pay attention to the killer logo. Shark with killer written below it shark with killer written below it, right? So it looks okay, except now Bruce is swimming toward the back of the car instead of the front. So when Tony did his logo, he very helpfully created two different versions, one swimming in each direction. And so we are going to use this one, right? No, I'm sorry, this one. Because when I rotate it around, Degrees. Now he's swimming in the correct direction. And I'm going to use the original one as a frame of reference for resizing here.
close to perfect. All right, we'll kill the original killer. Hardy, hardy, har. <coughs> oh, hold on. I did have the wrong one. <laughs> so yeah, it's this one. We'll try that again. attention to where the front of the car was. swimming toward the front of the car. Here we go. So let's go back to our events and series. Do I have one for the floor? Don't seem to. So, since I don't, what we'll do is real quickly kind of give you a quick look at how I find um, what I'm looking for. So, core before 24 logo transparent. So, when you go to images, try to search for transparent first, right? That's that's a first thing. Um, and then locate what you're looking for. And again, download the largest one you can find. Uh, let's see if there's an eye racing one for the roar. Okay, it looks like a winner. Now, I'm not going to download it from here. I'm going to open the image in a new tab so that I'm just downloading the image. Save image as, and then I'm going to go to my closet and paints and assets and events and series. And I'm going to call it Roar. Now, when I go back here, I've got a Roar logo that I can drop in. And it's huge, right? It's way too big, but that's okay. Bring it down to size for use on my wing end caps. Let's see what that looks like on car. Upside down is how it looks, but I think I think it's going to end up looking pretty good. Um, we'll go ahead and duplicate that while it's there and I will rotate one of them and then the other one I'll move down and out of the way for the moment before we put it on the other oh hell we'll go ahead and just place it Uh, let's bring both of them down a little bit in size here. another look and that should be the end caps done yeah the roar logos look pretty good which now tempts me to put one up front somewhere it might be what I end up doing with those fenders I was angsting about hell let's go ahead and do it what the H
it's all about just a little bit of experimentation and practice and uh, a little experimentation and review and being willing to, to just screw around with it for a while and then once you've got got it where you want it you duplicate that mamma jamma turn on your wire for judging so notice one two three it intersects with the third with the third one right so that's what we want it to do here Rotate it around 180 degrees and one, two, three. Now we'll turn off the wireframe and they should be pretty well lined up. Yeah, I think that actually helps me a lot with that front area. I was struggling with how much unused real estate there was there. And sometimes there's value in minimalism, right? And not having every spot of the car taken up by something. But, um, but I think that was needed, especially since it's so specific to this event. Um, all right. I think I'm happy with this. So now we've got a paint we like. The first and most important thing you do is to take a picture of it so your team can drool and you get everyone excited and racing with you. That's how you drive participation. People want to drive cool looking cars. And so I will. Snipping tool. New. No. Nope. And then. Quit. Yes. I'm going to save that for the moment. Make sure that this is saved. And remember, I've been exporting that TGA file the whole time. So you'll open up your Trading Paints profile, find the car you're looking for. Right. In my case, this is the Ford FRS 500, FR500S. I'm going to continue to mess that up. It's fine. And you go to choose a paint, upload your personal paint, and just like we were exporting, I'm going to go documents, iRacing, paint. Uh, what did they call it? They just had FR500S, 147818. If you choose by date modified, you should notice that 162019 is there. So I'm going to hit open. And there it is. All right, and that's all there is to it. Now, if I were to turn Trading Paints back on, and if I were to turn Trading Paints back on and jump into the sim, that paint would now be present for myself and everyone else to see. So that's all there is to it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions about um, using GIMP for iRacing templates, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. I hope this was helpful and informative. Thank you very much for watching. As always, I appreciate it. We'll talk to you later.